It's important that we on the outside of this don't decide a verdict in our heads. The judicial process must be allowed to take its course. No one, including the soldiers of the Special Air Service Regiment, current and former, want murderers or war criminals in their ranks. Full stop. These are tough individuals who've worked damned hard to earn their Sandy Beret, the distinctive headdress of the SAS Regiment. They don't want it dishonoured with criminal acts. If anyone is found guilty in a fair and transparent process, then the convicted party should suffer the consequences. But we are not there yet. We are a long way from it. There are allegations that are not proven, and a five-year investigation into two serious claims has just pretty much fallen apart. But secondly, we need to stop dead in its tracks this propensity for conviction by media. We see the constant public campaigns to achieve convictions in the public mind before any charges have been laid in courts. Sometimes you ha have to stand someone down or remove a minister while an investigation is carried out. That doesn't mean they're guilty. Kathleen Folbig spent 20 years in jail after a media frenzy surrounding her case. And she's free because of new scientific discoveries. And we can go further back to the conviction of Lindy Chamberlain in the early 1980s following one of the most spectacular trials in Australian history, only to have her freed after evidence emerged to corroborate her version of events. But this mob rule pitchfork justice seems to be the new modus operandi in Australia. Use a PR campaign to sway public opinion of a person's guilt before a trial, because it's much harder to convince people after their mind is made up that their initial conclusions were wrong. We're not going to litigate the case for or against Robert Smith here. What we will say is that Australia asks these men and women to volunteer to be sent to far off lands to fight in wars on our behalf. The SAS Regiment is the best of the best, up with the best special forces operators in the world. But they are still only human. In Afghanistan, every local was potentially out to kill you, and as many of your mates as possible. In the stressful and split-second world of combat operations, decisions are made that we, from the safety of our lounge rooms, can second-guess, but we weren't there. When you've had to pick up the pieces of your mates and put them into bags for collection, seal their sucking chest wounds with bandages, kill or be killed by the kid who just rode up on a motorbike carrying an improvised explosive device, being given a list of suspected terrorists to kill or capture, and they would rather die trying to kill you than be captured. That can change your perspective on life. Ben Robert Smith and the men and women who served with him saw, suffered and had to do terrible things that the rest of us simply could not imagine. He at least is entitled to the presumption of innocence until he faces any charges that may come in court and is appropriately convicted. Up till now, there are no charges. No prosecutor has had confidence that they could gain a conviction after at least five years of investigations. The standard of proof for a civil case, like a defamation trial, is much lower than for a criminal one. All you have to prove in a defamation case is that on the balance of probabilities, the allegations are true. No charges have ever been laid. As of today, Ben Robert Smith is an innocent man, and it's wrong for our media to now be brazenly calling him a murderer on the basis of the findings of a civil case. If you enjoyed that content, there's lots more where that came from. The Other Side Australia is back every Tuesday and Friday on ADH TV and all good podcast platforms. It's your weekly short circuit summary of the best news commentary from Australia and abroad. Don't miss it.